Back one final time talking about Loki here today. Season finale, not series finale, thankfully. More on that a little bit later. But for all time, always, episode six of Loki. This is going to be a fun one. This one had a very polarizing reaction from people online. From what I saw, a lot more people liked it than didn't like it. But we'll get into exactly why that is. Um, as we discuss it here, but we got an all-star panel on cast, uh, you know, on tap, as always. Chris, you're back as well. Chris, the Doc Mueller, BR underscore doctor on the Twitter machine. Chris, what's going on, dude? Oh, not much. This was uh, an interesting ending for this show, that's for sure. At least for this season, because again, like I said, we got another season to go, so we got a lot more to discuss here than uh, just beyond season one. Phil, you return. You're PhilDL616 on the Twitter machine. Phil, what's going on, man? I'm good. How are you? Doing great. And Tom, you are back as well. I can't forget, I can't remember the last time we talked to you about something Marvel. I think it was WandaVision. You can correct me, but Phil, you're back. Or Phil, Tom, you're back on the show as well. What's going on, Tom? <laughs> uh, not much. It was WandaVision, actually. It's been a while. It's been uh, a good while. Good to be here, man. Someone said the other day that it's been six months since the show came out, which is factually correct, but it doesn't feel like it's been six months at all which is fucking wild. But, Tom, wow. you know, we spoke about WandaVision a couple months ago. We haven't spoke to here on the show since, and obviously we talk over DMs and stuff like that. But uh, tell me what your Twitter machine is for all the people listening, as well as what your thoughts <laughs> have been on all the Marvel stuff in the last six months that we haven't really got your thoughts on. Uh, cool, yeah. It's at Tom Clark Pods, P-O-D-S. Um, yeah, I, uh, I've, I've really been digging this stuff, man. I mean, as everybody knows, we couldn't get out and about. Uh, everyone's uh, sequestered at home, and thankfully, uh, hopefully we're now on the rebound. Mm -hmm. Baby step, baby steps, right? But, uh, <laughs> I mean, I, dude, I've been a, I was a Marvel kid. I'm a Marvel guy. So I, I, I've enjoyed this stuff immensely. And uh, Loki's been, uh, I, for, me, for me personally, Loki's been the highlight, and that's tough because I've enjoyed all the shows so far. But, yeah, it's, it's definitely been a highlight for me. Well, kind of going off that, you raise a great question, and we were kind of discussing this as we went along with the show for the last six weeks. Chris, I think you were the one that had mentioned that this might be your favorite show of the three. For me, it is. I agree with Tom. Would you say the same? Was this your favorite show of all the Marvel shows so far, slash properties, whatever? Um, It's definitely up there. It's hard to decide between them because each one has been so different. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, comparing them is almost pointless at this point, but <laughs> I would say that this one definitely intrigued me the most for what's to come. I think this one had more world building might be the right term, more world building stuff in it than any of the other shows, although those will impact stuff to come and we just don't know yet because we haven't seen uh, what the aftermath is going to be. But yeah, I mean, I, for people that I could, you know, with the WandaVision finale, some people didn't like the finale and we discussed them many months ago because it wasn't what they thought it would be. There was no Mephisto, blah, blah, blah. It didn't set up the next 10 movies, although it probably does tie into Doctor Strange too. Um, this one clearly sets up a lot of things. We got a character from Ant-Man and the uh, and the Wasp 3 or whatever the fuck, or Quantumania is what it's going to be called, the third one, coming up in a couple of years. Uh, that being Kang the Conqueror, he was here, he was here on this episode. He's going to be probably in a lot of other stuff going forward, uh, whether it be he, the new Thanos or whatever. But what about you, Phil? What were your thoughts on Loki overall compared to the other shows? Like Chris said, you can't really compare them, but was this your favorite show of the three so far? Ah, that's tough to say. I don't know if I would say it's my favorite. I don't know about you guys, but I've missed WandaVision the most since it stopped. Like, mm -hmm. I've been wanting more episodes of WandaVision. Um, and I think I enjoyed Sam's journey throughout that show more than any other show. Mm -hmm. But I definitely think, like, the finale for Loki is the best out of the three. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely agree. WandaVision overall, I think, was just a stronger show episode to episode. And I like Loki overall. It is my favorite show that we've seen so far. But the finale is what a lot of people are going to remember, especially with what it sets up. Especially for people, like, obviously, we all know what we're talking about, and you guys more so than me. Like, I don't I don't really know much about the comics. You guys kind of fell in the blanks with that type of stuff, for me anyway. But, like, those watching the show from a casual viewer perspective, in a wrestling term, may not know who the fuck King the Conqueror is or the fact that Jonathan Majors was playing him and they might have been ultraly confused from what happened in that last episode of the show. So let's talk about it. Uh, Phil, I'll, I'll start with you. Your overall thoughts in the last episode of Loki for Season 1. Did it meet your expectations? Because we've been talking about King for a while. We got him. Was this what you wanted out of the, uh, out of the season finale? I think it exceeded expectations because I, I think I expected it to be either Kang or Mortis. And we kind of got like a mix of, you know, 
a mortis and another character Mm -hmm. and i think we got such a good um introduction to what majors is going to do in a role because he was fantastic oh highlight of the episode yeah so and, and i think they did enough to build to the next season i thought it exceeded expectations I completely agree. I think there was a lot of talking on the episode, so obviously there was really no action at all. I mean, you probably could put all the action combined in the last five episodes, and this one didn't even come close. Um, but, you know, it was it was decent for what it was in terms of the action perspective, but it was really all storytelling and explaining everything that kind of led up to this point. And obviously, they didn't cap off almost they did a few things but like they didn't put the final bow in a lot of different storylines on the show like we've been saying for weeks that getting mobius on a friggin jet ski would be the perfect visual to ride off into the sunset with on this fucking show and we didn't get that i felt cheated out of it but clearly they got to leave some stuff open because of season two um so i love the episode for what it was i agree i thought he was the best part of the episode uh what about you tom what were your thoughts on the debut of king on this episode did the season finale meet your lofty expectations I, I'm I'm with everyone here. I, he was fantastic. He killed it. Uh, I, I I don't know that I didn't expect him to be good, but much better than I thought uh, he could be. Um, I will be straight though and say that when the doors opened, it's him. I figured it out, and then I was let down just a hair because mm-hmm. I I wasn't. I'm not invested in him yet. I am now, but it, upon the reveal, I wasn't invested. So I was kind of hoping, ooh, is Mobius behind those doors? Is it? You know, is it someone? Because I was kind of hoping, hey, who do we already know? Yeah. And it, you know what I mean? Like, where's the smoking gun? I, I want it to be someone that it's either going to disappoint me, make me sad, or, or take me off. And like when I saw him, like, oh, it's the Kang guy. Okay, cool. Now, once he starts, he's great. He's mm-hmm. phenomenal. And I and by the end, I'm perfectly fine. But when those doors open, I, I had a, a, just a twinge of, oh, okay, they're going to go with what felt like a, a safe choice, maybe. Um, but that's just a, that's a minor complaint. But I, I thought it, uh, and like you said earlier, it sets up. I believe it sets up years moving forward. I mean, we're talking for the whole next phase. I think that that this reveal sets up for what's going to happen in the future. I think it's. Uh, I think it was what a way to wrap it up. Really well done. Yeah, I mean, he's already been cast for Quantum Mania. That's not due out until 2023, like February, I think, which isn't for another two years, year and a half at the earliest. So it's going to be a while before we see him again in that capacity. But maybe not. We probably could see him in any other movie show coming out in the next two years, and there's bound to be a lot of it. So, uh, you know, he could be making small appearances like we saw here. And I'm very shocked, personally, that this was not spoiled ahead of time. When you get an actor, the level of Jonathan Majors doing a lot of great stuff right now to appear in the last episode of the show, a lot of this stuff gets spoiled. Like, even... um, Julia Dreyfus is a cameo in, in, in Black Widow, talking about that going off. I, I completely spoil it for you, Phil. I apologize. Um, no, that's cool. <laughs> I won't say where it was in the movie, but that was spoiled many months ago for a lot of people. And uh, I don't know how these people figure these things out, but that was already spoiled. This was not, which was amazing to see and absolutely incredible, and this paid off. But you make a great point, Tom. You make a great point because for people that don't keep up with the casting announcements or don't follow the comics as closely and don't know who Kane the Conqueror is, the door is probably open, and they're probably disappointed because they don't know who the hell this guy is. So can you kind of elaborate a little bit on that, Chris, and your thoughts on it from a personal perspective? And also if other people, if you can understand other people being let down by it, like Tom had said. I mean, I could definitely understand why some people might be like, oh, the big reveal is somebody we've never seen before that might feel cheap, but it's also not supposed to be a big finale reveal. Like, this is a reveal that is opening the door to a bunch of other things. So, Doctor Strange 2, Spider-Man, and uh, whatever, No Way Home. Yeah. And I'm thinking we might even possibly get season two of Loki before Ant-Man, depending on how they decide to do that. So we could see this character in other places, possibly playing different versions of Nathaniel Richards. So, yeah, we don't really know which version we were looking at here. Like, he referred to himself as, you know, a conqueror, but... He never said, hi, my name is Kang, or hi, my name is Nathaniel, or hey, what's up, I'm a Mortis. Yeah. Like, so that is one of the things that makes me wonder, like, how is he going to play the character of Kang 
is it going to be a completely different type of performance from what we're seeing here? Because he was so good in this episode. Like, once they got off the elevator and they were in the office, like, he just commanded the entire show. And within five minutes of him being on screen, I was just, like, fully invested in him as the character. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what he does. But um, on a personal level, like... I, I did think that reveal was sort of one of those things. It's like we all predicted it, so I almost would have rather had something unpredictable. Mm-hmm. But at the same point, you know, this is setting up everything else, so it's a necessary thing to do. The whole thing with uh, him, like, the, when once they crossed a certain point, he no longer knew what was going to be like what happened and yeah. then so he just straight up stabs him i was a little surprised by that i i i think i told you guys two episodes back that i felt like she was going to turn on loki you did say i that, knew yeah. i kind of knew she was going to do something because she was obsessed with revenge and this episode because i've been wondering ever since they did that scene where they take her from her timeline and they never tell you what is her nexus point? In this episode, I was like, oh, he knew all along. He set her up on the path to kill him eventually. Yeah. he. It, there was no nexus point. It's basically, he took her out of the timeline to set her up to want revenge all this time. Yeah, because he even said, like, I paved the way and you just walked the path. It, yeah, and that, that ties up all of the loose ends of why, A, why she was taken out of her timeline, and then B, how did she escape the TVA so easily? Yeah, same thing with Loki, too, probably, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, that would make the most sense. I mean, I, I when you put it like that, so you're talking about, like, a master plan that goes back, what, 30 years? But is that really 30 years in his time? Does it go by quick, or does it go by differently, maybe, for him? Um, I mean... We're we're talking about somebody that sees all time at the same time. Yeah, so exactly. he's not looking at it that way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I can see how people are, are looking like, oh, uh, well, it would have made more sense if it was like a Loki variant or like Mobius. But I think he revealed enough there when he was basically manipulating them, because that's essentially what he was doing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um and he was basically playing them against each other. And there's so much stuff he does in that scene that plays off everything we saw for the five episodes before that, that I thought it worked. Yeah, I thought the whole thing worked. I thought everyone played their role well. And just the, like like you said, with the whole tease of the betrayal from Sylvie in the last couple of episodes and what you mentioned a few episodes back, Phil, about the possibility of that happening. I thought the way they did it was great. And also... I had seen someone made the connection that the whole interaction between Sylvie and Loki kind of played out, obviously, I assume this was intentional, with the whole dagger analogy that he was making several episodes back. I think it was the uh, Lamentous episode back, episode three or whatever. The whole love is a dagger thing, and they kind of played out that whole interaction as if what the analogy was referring to. I can't say it word for word, but or call it word for word. That's basically what it was, though. Um, so I thought that was well done too. And his whole acting performance, echoing all of your guys' thoughts, I thought was absolutely amazing. But you guys talk about Mobius. So at the end of the episode, obviously he doesn't recognize who Loki is because it's a different timeline after everything happens in the final two minutes of the episode. Are we going to get the original Mobius back with his original thoughts? Is that a different timeline? I, 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 I fail to believe that this is the Loki, or not the Loki, this is the Mobius that we're going to be getting from this point forward, where he has no memory of anything that's happened over the last six episodes. I don't know. I, I think they'll find a way. I, I don't know what that way would be. And if they don't, that somehow this guy will be convinced. Um, maybe there'll be something that, that, I don't know if Loki could do it, if there's a glitch somewhere, if there's... I don't know. I, I, I feel like that uh, the bond that he and Loki obviously built... Uh, you know, uh, Mobius goes in to shake his hand and Loki hugs him. And you're like, I did not see that coming. So uh, Loki, I think, felt a genuine uh, friendship for this guy. And I, I just don't I, I see them circling back to that. I don't know how they'll get there. Uh, but I personally think that they'll they'll put that back together. I just think there was too much work put into that to just sort of, you know, throw that by the wayside. But here's a question for you guys. Um the fact that this timeline was reset and they didn't know him, 
is is there a possibility that this could go beyond this show? Could this go somewhere else inside the MCU, not just here? If he reset this by doing what he did, is it only going to affect this show, or is it going to affect everything else as well? I mean, my initial thought was he got sent to a different reality's like fake version of the TVA because now that the time stream is just splintered into a million different things like you got to imagine that each reality probably has this fake TVA set up now and I think he just got sent to a different one is kind of how I took it but Mm -hmm. I don't know I mean maybe it'll cross over into other things and we'll start to see slight changes being made like maybe this is maybe this is them explaining how Terrence Howard turned into Don Cheadle. I was literally about to say that. <laughs> yes. I was gonna say, can uh, they use this as an excuse for all the recasting they've done, which hasn't been a lot, admittedly, but like Mark Ruffalo into the Hulk. Like, can they use this as the storyline reason for why all that happened over the last ten plus years? I doubt they'll go that deep, but it would be hilarious if in another movie we see Terrence Howard playing Rhodey in a different thing. Like, I don't think he'll do it, but it would be hilarious if they got him for a quick cameo as, like, Earth 2's James Rhodes. Yeah. I don't know. There is a lot of ways you can go with this in terms of, like, not just recasting, but this is also raising another question, too, kind of going off what you said, Tom, with how much this affects. Could we see dead characters be brought back i mean like could the gamora that died in infinity war be brought back because the gamora that we have now going into guardians 3 is the gamora of 2014 with no memory of anything that happened after that point any interaction with peter curl whatsoever so like could that be it i i don't want to see that many characters if any be brought back but i thought that was a possibility too coming off this episode yeah um i definitely wonder if there's a chance that we'll see like real pietro again yeah, possibly. What, what, wasn't he recently cast up for something? Or was that in DC? Was that a DC character? Uh, I don't he know. did get cast for something. You're right. I did see something. I just don't know what it was. I don't What's remember. What's his real name again? Is it Evan Peters or is that the oh, other Evan guy? Oh, Evan Peters. No, you're right. Evan no, wait. Peters is the other guy. Um, oh, that's, you, that's you're thinking of um... Aaron Taylor Johnson. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Let's see. Um... Maybe it wasn't more. I think it was something. It was probably um, the DC or something. I don't remember what it was. It was just recently, though. But that doesn't mean they can't use him for something. Yeah, I'm, sh- I'm sure he oh, signed his contract. He's yeah. going to play Craven for Sony. Oh, that's right. Ooh, that's oh, right. I forgot right. about that. Okay. Could if this... that movie ever happens. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Craven... Well, man, I mean, Venom 2 is happening, so <laughs> we'll see. I was going to say, do you think this this whole thing, going off of what Tom said, could affect Mobius and Venom and all that other shit, or is that still going to be left separate, you guys think? Uh, I think Sony is going to try and keep a close, tight arm around all their properties. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't think... I don't... I don't think they want to let as many of their successful properties that they have touch Marvel, because they want their own thing. Like, I saw someone say, maybe this is going to get us into the Spider-Verse miles at one point, and I'm like, nah, I doubt it. <laughs> That's Sony's baby. Do you think it's just that, that, I know this is going off topic from Loki, but do you think it's a situation with Sony where they might continue the contract with Spider-Man and get him in more Avengers movies and shit, but they will never, Marvel that is, will never have full control over the Sony properties like Venom and shit like that, or get Venom into the MCU? Do you think there's a, there isn't a chance of that ever happening, Phil? I, I don't. I, I think if we see Venom in an MCU movie, I think it's going to be a different version. Yeah, I, don't know. I guess we'll see. What about you, Chris? What are, what are your thoughts? I mean, if ever they were to do something big, it would have to be like Sony would have to be so down in profits that Disney just buys them to get back the characters like they did with Fox. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't see that happening. But yeah, it feels like Sony at some point is either going to tie all their stuff together without Spider-Man and the rest of the Marvel universe being part of it, or they're going to just eventually pull Tom Holland from 
Marvel and either do their own Spider-Man or bring Tom Holland into their universe. I don't know. At this point, I I don't think it really matters because I think enough people know, like, yeah, Venom's sort of its own little thing. Like, I don't think it's really that important that Spider-Man exists for the Venom movies to be successful. Yeah. So they can do their own thing with all these different Spider-Man characters and never even use Spider-Man as part of it. And for all we know, like that might be what helps. Like Spider-Man's always the main character. If you give all these other people some screen time, people might get attached to them. Yeah, that's true. I don't know if they'll ever introduce Spider-Man into the, like the Venom shit, but I mean, obviously it's central to the character, but I don't know. I guess if it works just as well on its own and it makes enough money, I guess you don't really, you don't really need. Well, to. you know what they should do? That's what they should do with Garfield. Is they should say Venom is a continuation of Garfield's Spider-Man universe and bring him back and give him a fair shot. Because I think if he was playing a Spider-Man that is the actual age he is, <laughs> like, and not a twenty-five-year-old man playing a teenager in high school, I, I think it could be better. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, there's a lot of people who did like his portrayal. So bring him back, make him the Spider-Man of this Venom side of the universe, and then leave Tom Holland with Marvel. I'm not going to lie to you. I legit thought you were talking about the fucking cat for a second. <laughs> the cat? <laughs> and when you said uh, Garfield. <laughs> Wait, what? The you said Gar- the Garfield, the, you know, the cat Garfield? Oh, Jesus. Because I, I, listen, I know who Andrew Garfield is. I know exactly what you're talking about. But the first thing I think of when you say Garfield is the fucking... I'm like, is he really proposing a, a crossover between Garfield the cat and uh, whatever? Voiced by... Uh, who was that voiced by a couple of years ago? Bill Murray. Bill Murray. Yeah, yeah. He's going to show up until Venom. He hates Mondays. And he lasagna together. Uh, they've already ruined the Garfield franchise enough. We don't need to do any more. I didn't know they made a sequel. They made yeah, a couple of those. A couple of movies, yeah. Jesus Christ. Speaking of bad sequels, completely off topic, but who's seen Space Jam 2? I have not seen it. No. <laughs> did you watch it, Chris? I, I thought you watched it. Yeah, I did. What were your thoughts on it? How bad was it? Um, Don't expect a better movie than the first one, and be prepared to probably think this one's a little worse. <laughs> like, it, I could see a kid liking this, but, mm. you know... It's definitely a movie that's not made for adults. They tried to include a few deep cut jokes for adults, yeah. but they just end up kind of being not all that funny. <laughs> what about you, Tom? You got kids. Would you see this movie if you haven't already? Nah, my my son will be 13 in September, so he's he's an NBA kid uh, to some degree. Uh-huh. He's not a LeBron James guy at all. <laughs> uh He's just not. Of course, then again, he was a Steph Curry guy, and now for some reason he's not. So he changes as the wind blows. But uh, uh, and and in this house, he knows that MJ is the greatest of all time. So he knows <laughs> he he knows what the official family mantra is in the house of Clark. So yeah, oh, that's perfect. I heard that, or I think it was you, Chris, that tweeted that they make a joke about Michael Jackson in the movie. But and you said that was like the best part about it. Oh yeah, there's a there's a Michael Jordan joke in the movie that was funny but only because i don't know i don't want to spoil anything for anybody just in case any of you guys end up seeing it but there is a michael jordan joke that's kind of funny michael jordan i think i said michael jackson my accent i don't know what the fuck i'm saying (laughs) wrong mj i don't think they're making a michael jackson joke in uh, fucking space jam yeah michael jordan uh back to loki though was there anything else from this episode that really stood out because obviously the kang thing was like the big thing but I mean, it really, this was basically Kang featuring Loki. That's basically what this episode was. Well, I mean, actually, another thing that we didn't discuss, Ravona Renslayer, what's next for her? We found out she was a principal, which we can kind of tell from the pen earlier on in the show. They paid that off, which we, we, we kind of got to know her background. Um, Tom, what were your thoughts on the whole Ravona Renslayer thing, and where do you think, or what's next for her, do you think? I, uh, I, I was trying to, I, all right, so... They were trying to kind of trying to explain her motivations uh, when he said, you betrayed me. She said, you betrayed me. And so when she finally c- 
because it, it's like, oh, well, she's a villain. She's wearing a black hat. Well, not to her. She's not because she felt like she stuck her neck out for him and he let her down. Mm. And he, tr- he trusts a Loki, two Lokis over her. And I'm like, okay, I can kind of see where she's coming from, but she sentenced him to death. And, and I mean, she may have made the comment, well, if anybody could get out of the void, it would be you. But I'm like, yeah, but you still kind of sends him to death. So I don't really empathize with her at all. Like, uh, <laughs> if, if she if she had tearfully sent him, if she had said, you're not leaving me a choice, I'm sorry, I don't want to do this, it's my job, that would have been one thing. But she had no qualms about sending him. So, like, I don't know if she'll come back as a villain. I don't know how far they'll go with it. Um he evidently thought they were much closer than what they really were. Um, it'll be interesting. That That's something. And, and again, I love that we're getting a season two. So maybe they will pay this off. Yeah. So I think that was another thing, too, because a lot of people weren't satisfied with how the show ended because clearly there's more to come. And we found out at the end, which we all kind of assumed. I think it's been rumored for like six, seven months now. But Loki is getting a second season. The first um, Disney Plus show, the Marvel shows, to be getting a second season. WandaVision, I don't think, is getting another one. Was Falcon and Winter Soldier getting a second season, or was that just the next movie that they confirmed, Captain America 4? They just confirmed Cap 4, so I have a feeling that he's just in the movies again now. Maybe him and Bucky both. That's what I was thinking. Okay, so Loki's probably... I mean, actually, What If, I think, is going to get a second season, too, and that debuts on August 11th, which is your birthday, right, Chris? Yes, I am very excited about this show, the... Oh, we need to talk about the new intro that they used at the beginning of this episode because that freaked me out when we started hearing the song (laughs) from the end of Endgame when he's dancing with Peggy. I'm like, whoa, are they about to flash back to Cap and Peggy for some reason? And then it kept going and all of a sudden we hear like Chadwick Boseman saying Wakanda forever and all this stuff like they they've redone their intro graphic and audio like three or four times now since the start of the MCU. So it was a little jarring for me. At the beginning of the episode, because I thought that music was in the show, and we were about to flash back to Cap and Peggy, and I was like, oh shit, surprise Chris Evans cameo. Like, <laughs> um, it ended up not being the case. You think it's a redo, though? I thought it was a part of the episode. Yeah, that's what I, I thought, too. I did, too. Like, oh, I, my take on it was, all of that stuff that they were playing from the audio was from the beginning of the timeline going forward. Oh, maybe. I thought maybe that was just part of their new intro, like, audio or something. I don't know. We'll see in the next project if it starts and it's just the normal one. I thought, But yeah, that makes more sense now that you say that. I, I figured it was part of the episode, too, because especially when they're playing it, obviously beyond the Marvel logo, you're in the timeline at that point before we show up at the Citadel. So I just assumed it was part of the episode, too. Like, you hear a baby crying, and I heard someone made the connection that that was actually the I mean, I don't know how the fuck people just figured this out, but apparently it was the same baby that Loki was in the first Thor movie when... Um, Otis found him or something. So, and a lot of the a lot of the clips, if you go back and listen to it, are Loki centered. Oh, did I say Otis? Holy you shit! You said Otis. <laughs> <laughs> Otis is making his MC debut. Holy shit! Uh, Man, <laughs> I'm I'm just um, botching left and right here between Michael Jackson and Otis. <laughs> Holy fuck! Um, the dozer, the dozer, the dozer. Um, yeah, but that's why I assume because I assume like it was from inside the timeline, so you were getting like stuff like they made the point of having like Captain America stuff towards the beginning and like Peggy and then they did like um um Michael Douglas like the original Ant Man at the beginning as well. So that made me think it was all from the beginning of the timeline. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was thinking too. I mean hey, it could end up being the new intro and we get all these cool clips at the beginning I mean, of each show. I mean we'll find out with what if in a month, right? So I heard an interesting theory. So you know how WandaVision was supposed to take place after Loki, like in the the timeline of the shows being released, it was going to be the third show originally? Yeah. So somebody was saying like at the end of WandaVision, when we see her like meditating and learning magic or whatever she's doing, and all of a sudden she hears her kids and kind of takes off. I think somebody said, like, that's the moment when the multiverse splits and all these new timelines start, and sh- what she's hearing is her kids in a different timeline calling for her. That makes sense. That so makes I a lot of sense. If, I wonder if maybe what we're going to see is, like, her breaching the barriers since she's, like, a nexus being or whatever it is. She can 
kind of freely travel between the multiverse. So I wonder if it's going to be about Doctor Strange, like, trying to stop her because it'll tear something apart or something like that. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. Um, on the Ravona thing, did you guys notice when they went back to her timeline that they went back to 2018? So that was, like, the year of the snap? Yes. So not only that, oh, but, yeah. like, if you look at the high school itself, it said homecoming, which would put it in, like, late 2018, which would be after the snap specifically. I don't know if there's any significance to that, but, yeah, that is interesting. Yeah, um, I thought about that. And then, like, I thought everything Ravona, like, I think she clearly cared about Mobius because, I mean, even when she was packing that bag and, like, whatever was downloading onto her um, temp pad – she looked down at the rings on the table. So she clearly cared yeah. about him. Yeah. But it's just the way, and just, I thought that scene, both of them did some great acting in that scene um, when he comes back. And I'm just wondering where she went when she went through the portal because it sure seems like she went to meet Kang somewhere. Yeah, because I was going to say, when Miss Minutes showed up and she's like, these aren't the files I asked for. She's like, he thinks these will be more useful. And she's like, who's he? Yeah. And then Miss Minutes just disappears. So yeah, I think that was like instructions basically being like, this is what's about to happen. This is what I need you to do. Yeah. So we, we haven't totally haven't talked about Miss Minutes, like scaring the hell out of us at the beginning of the episode. Hey guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. What a jump scare. Yeah. Oh my God. Tara strong. What a performance. Like, she turned that character just ever so slightly to make it kind of creepy. Yeah. Gradually over the course she's of the show, like, too. We're talking about, like, he who remains. Like, she turned into this just weird, calm voice that just puts you a little bit at unease, you know? I, that was great. I think she did an excellent job with that. And I fully expected that to be just, like, an episode one joke. I didn't think that that character was going to be so important. Yeah, no, yeah. I thought she was great. I, I thought for a second that she was going to end up being the big bad of the show when she just first popped up. I'm like, the fuck? Like, especially with how creepy yeah, she was acting, too. Too. I'm like, hmm, interesting. I thought the way they did it was, was cool. But like you were saying earlier, Tom, about how, like, when the doors open. and I mean, I popped because I'm like, oh, I know Jonathan Majors is playing Kang in the next fucking ant-man movies i'm like oh that's cool but i can only imagine for people who don't follow that shit what the reaction probably was i saw renee young tweeting about it and she was like confused as fuck i'm like i can only imagine i i, I guess i i don't really get it because i'm not in that i'm not in that position but i don't know i thought it was well done though i think yeah. it's the i think it's the connections in this show that that really uh, of all the shows that you could imagine them doing, you would, I, mean, I wouldn't have thought that Loki would be the one that would have the most human feel to it. I mean, he yes. is, I think he is the, the best version of Loki we've ever seen. I think it's better than the version that Thanos killed. That Loki, I think at any given moment, could have still kind of done something sneaky. And we thought he was okay with Thor. Maybe he wasn't. We weren't sure. And even when Thanos killed him, I'm like, all right. All right, but what? Where is the punchline? He's. We all know he's not dead. So I thought, yeah, he's found a way. But this Loki's different, man, because this Loki has the realization that he is responsible for his mother's death, and the other Loki, I don't think, knew that. So this Loki has to have come to grips with that, and knowing for the rest of his existence, he's responsible, and he's he's been confronted with the fact of. Hey, you're all alone, pal. You've got nobody. And guess what? It's kind of your fault. <laughs> and, I mean, this guy cho made the choice to change. No one forced him. The TVA didn't put a gun to his head and say, we expect you to change. They didn't care if he was alive or dead. But he's made the choice to change. So I think this is a more well-rounded character than we've ever seen from Loki in the MCU. And I think he is just stellar. I love it. Yeah, I mean... We, we talked a lot about Majors. I think, man, Hiddleton did some great acting in this episode as well. When he, when he stops Sylvie from oh. killing her at first and he tells her, like, stop, don't do this. And he was trying to explain to her, like, I think, like, me and me and Chris talked before, the, before we recorded. And I was saying, like, I think the way that they put Loki in this episode basically in the same shoes that Thor is in in the first Thor movie. And Sylvie is in the same shoes as original Loki. 
and he's basically like trying to tell her like look you don't have to do this <laughs> like i've i you don't have to do this we can we can leave like right right and like it just doesn't work he's essentially in the same shoes as thor and he loses and like when he's sitting there after he goes through the portal like i'm telling you it's just great acting mm-hmm. great stuff yeah, the whole character arc of Loki's been great. I don't even know how they're going to be able to top this with the second season, but we already kind of speculated what that might have in store. And hopefully we get to see a little bit more of some of these characters and other projects before whenever the second season comes out, which I would assume won't be until closer to Quantumania, which isn't going to be for another year and a half, but I don't know. I guess we'll find out in due time. Was there anything else from this episode, guys, that stood out to you? Well, we need to talk about the kiss, don't oh, we? Do, we? Do we have to really talk about the kiss, though? <laughs> I, I was fine with the kiss. I know some people cringed. I thought the kiss was fine. I I thought it was it served its purpose. Um, I still it, think it's the equivalent to multiversal masturbation. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the only reason I think it serves its purpose is because, like I said, that um, Thor he's in the same spot as Thor was in, and and Selby's like original Loki. And when you go all the way back to episode two and. She's trying to explain to him how does her enchantments work. It's like, well, I get you to fall in love with me. And so her whole her whole misdirection mm-hmm. of trying to push him in the portal is like, well, let me kiss him first. And then the whole plan was always to just go through it and kill him anyway. So you, so, so she doesn't have feelings for him then? He definitely has feelings for I, her. I, I think she might, but I think her goal was always to kill Immortus. Oh, like definitely. She was never yeah. going to let him live. Yeah, and I think part of Loki finding himself and and coming coming to terms with who he is it is you know who do, who does Loki hate more than anybody? Probably himself. Uh, but but now, as weird as it sounds, maybe this is a, a metaphor for him. Okay, I got to accept who I am. Uh, who I am sucks. Uh, I've got to change. So maybe the kiss was a metaphor for that. Was him embracing who he is but also at the same time i gotta have some hope i have to move forward i have to do better than what i've do better than what i've done and be better than who i am now, maybe i read too much into it but that's kind of what i took from it yeah, yeah. I, I, I i i think that there's some metaphor in a sense that you're right he was ready to move forward and accept who he is but she wasn't and in some way she still sees herself as the other loki's will at some point i'm always going to turn on my loved ones. That's just how it goes. That I'm a Loki. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, even before she pushes him through the portal, she's like, I'm not you. Yeah. 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 No, it makes sense. I, it didn't bother me too much just because we already established that. I figured it was going to come at some point. It wasn't what we thought it would be because like you explained, Phil, it was really just her using him to get him through the fucking portal so then she could stab him. I, I mean, obviously, there's more to come with the two of them, but like... I don't know. It didn't really... I'm not a big fan of it, but I kind of figured it was coming at this point. When I watched it the second time, um, the thing that I think is great about it is when they kiss, and you can see you can see Immortus in the background with like this big look on his face, like, wow! Yeah. <laughs> Hilarious. I also felt like they put it in mostly because they knew fans were going to ship Sylvie and Loki. Like... They're not stupid. Whenever they put two characters in close quarters in these things, fans are just like, well, they should be together. I mean, they were a lot of people were saying that Loki and Moby should be together, too. That shipping is still going oh, on. Boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, people, people were shipping Sam and Bucky. People were shipping Bucky and Sam's sister. Uh, yeah, it's... It's a constant thing. Like, WandaVision was the only one that really didn't have that because they already have the relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Well, people. But, uh, what, what were we gonna say, Chris? I was, gonna, I was just gonna say the next thing I want to see Loki in is like I want to see him go look for Thor oh, and yeah. find him, and I want Thor to not be surprised at all. Be like, Loki shows up. Be like, what? You're not surprised to see me? Be like, you're Loki. You always find a way to escape death. Like, why should I be <laughs> surprised anymore? Like, I want it to be a total non-factor and just Thor to be super unimpressed. So he I just turns around be, like, oh, hey, Loki. <laughs> yeah, just get the funniest reaction because Loki would be kind of offended. Be like, listen, 
I'm a variant who's crossed time and space and all this different stuff. And he'll be like, yeah, sure you are, buddy. Just, <laughs> just move along. I don't know. I think they could reverse it this time. I think Thor could be the paranoid one and keep, keep staring at him through the whole movie thinking he's up to something. He's up to something. I know he's up to something. And Loki just finally looks at him and says, would you stop? I swear to God, I'm not up to anything. Because like, this is not the same guy that he knew before. So maybe they would twist it sort of a character reversal where Thor is the one that's ain't, he's got anxiety and he's he's not trusting and he's uh, sort of paranoid about it. Loki's the one that's calm and reserved and said, look, I promise you I'm not doing anything. What, what do I have to do to prove it to you? You know? Yeah. I mean, I think Hemsworth could play that well. Yeah. Yeah. We can get a Thor Loki reunion at some point if they play their cards. I don't know if it would turn into like him coming back to the full on MCU franchise, but it's possible. I mean, anything's possible oh. at this point. Did you guys hear that Chris Hemsworth actually recorded voiceover for Throg? Yes. Did he really? I didn't know that. <laughs> That's so funny to me yes. that they went to him like, hey, there's going to be a frog in a jar. It's technically Thor. Do you want to do the voice? And he'd be like, yeah. Like, <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> How do they not use that? They go through the trouble of bringing him in to do it. How do they not even use it? I think it was more of a visual gag than anything else. Like, there's a lot of little references to stuff in this show that ended mm. up meaning nothing in the long run. Like, yeah, a lot of it. The yeah. giant, the giant uh, Thanos copy, yellow too. jacket, helmet. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah all I, that I stuff. Think, I think those were all just meant to be Easter eggs for that episode. Um, yeah, but when they throw in so many, it starts to make you question it. Like. Does this mean anything, or is this just meant to distract me from this? Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, there were Easter eggs from day one that made me think it was Kang. Like, yeah, I, I mean, they pl- they planted seeds for this throughout. Um, even in that episode, there were tons of Easter eggs in that episode that was like, yeah, it's Kang. <laughs> well, the fact they actually just, delivered on it is what was surprising to me because I know, like you were saying earlier, I think it was you, Chris, that were that you were saying like. We got so many teases for it that you kind of expected it to be him. Honestly, yes, but at the same time, it's like Marvel. They, I I have faith that they know what they're doing. It's the exact opposite, like with WWE creative, where we have no fucking clue what they're gonna do. <laughs> but with Marvel, though, I always have faith that wherever they're gonna go, it's gonna be something good. But I don't know with other shows. I mean, the Mephisto teases weren't as over. I mean, people were just kind of putting things there that weren't actually there for for a lot of stuff, including him and whatever. But I don't know. I didn't actually know if they were going to go in that direction because like Tom was saying, I figured it might be Mobius or a Loki variant. So I was pleasantly surprised they actually went in the direction that they teased they were going in. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can see it being a surprise, but I, I think for people that are like, it's random, I don't think it was really that random. I think if you look back, there's been stuff pointing to Kang for a while. Yeah, I think if you watch back the show, I think it'll make more sense, honestly. Like, there's some things now that you probably... I haven't rewatched all six episodes yet, but if you go back and rewatch the show, it'll probably make more sense now, because I had seen someone say, and again, this is... I don't know how people figure this out, but, like, after Loki or Sylvie, or I think it was Sylvie, when they cut off the head of the timekeeper, the fake timekeeper, you faintly hear someone say, see you soon, and it was the exact same line from Kang later on in this episode when he said, see you soon, right before Selby killed him. I think it was the same line, and they just kind of either made it higher or lower in that one scene, and that was back in episode four. So, again, the the, the, the clues are there if you just really go back and pay attention, I guess. Yeah. yeah. It, it definitely seems like when he said see you soon, it was, it was serious, and we're going to get Ravona probably going off and finding you know, this timeline's 31st century Nathaniel Richards and maybe uh, she'll, maybe she'll end up being the reason that he turns into Kang or something. I don't know. Yeah. Now, now that you say his real name, now that we know that the descendant of Reed Richards is black, does that mean that Reed Richards I is just black? Gonna, I was just <laughs> going to ask you that. Do you think we're going to get a black Reed Richards or, and or invisible woman? That, that definitely raises the question. If it descendants black, I would, I would have to def- decide, like, he had to be black, and I mean... At least we one could... of the parents would have to be, don't you think? Like, yeah. otherwise it would kind of be a cop-out on their part. I think it does, and I think even, like, Iron Lad at this point, like, if they do the Iron Lad the way they do in the comic, and he's just a younger version of the Nathaniel Richard, then he also has to be black. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, we, uh, 
uh, Phil, you and I did uh, uh, the Six M podcast, and I were talking about Batman, about how you know Batman kind of has to be a white guy because of you know the old money and because of a lot of other things. I don't think the Fantastic Four has to be white at all. I don't think they have no. to be. You know what I mean? I think that's no. the one. Not that anybody has to be, but in terms of of a character's origin. Well, it only makes sense. T'Challa has to be black. I mean, there's a, right. of course, there's no question. Batman has to be white. Fantastic Four can be anything, and it would work fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, honestly, like even though some people, I'm sure, did make a big deal out of it, I don't think they really made a huge deal out of it when Michael B. Jordan was the Human Torch. Oh, there were people being ridiculous about that online. I, I remember yes. it. there were people really. That was the message board day. So I remember how people acted on message board. <laughs> ridiculous yeah i mean it was it was definitely a, an area of contention for some people but i think the majority of fans were like i just want the movie to be good i don't care who's yeah yeah and yeah. i mean hey wasn't michael b jordan's fault that that movie was bad he was he was fine yeah. it was the movie was just bad <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah i mean off the top of my head like like Steve Rogers is another character that has to be white. Like I don't think you could cast a black Steve Rogers. It just doesn't right, work. Right. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I I hope this means we're getting a black Reed Richards. Um, and I hope this means that you know they already have someone in mind. If they had already cast majors, maybe that means they already have their Reed Richards cast. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure they're talking to people. I, I know that Feige said Fantastic Four is, like, way down the line at this point. They haven't even given a speculative release date or yeah. year. So I think at this point they're not as concerned with maybe casting those specific roles right now. But who knows? I mean, it's Marvel. They do stuff that we don't know You probably years in advance, so... Yeah. But look, we already had a Latino uh, invisible woman, Jessica Alba. She's not white. Even though they just act like she's white throughout the entire yeah. movie. <laughs> they never acknowledge that she's Latino. Um, they do. You're right. But still, like she is in reality Latino. So, But putting yeah. the blonde hair on her really like... And the contacts. It just... Yeah. Yeah. Um, if I had the fantasy cast... I would say cast Lakeith Stanfield because I think it would be great. Hmm. What about Sue? I don't know. <laughs> I, I didn't <laughs> think that far ahead. But yeah, I would be... I mean, there's plenty of guys that they can get. Um, but, I mean, that's unimportant. And even if we do get to Fantastic Four casting and it's a white guy, I, don't, I wouldn't be super mad at it. But I did think that watching this episode... That is interesting. I, I just, mean, they got time to figure it out. I, I'm just curious, like, are we going to get another origin story, or are we going to pick up with the Fantastic Four who've already existed for a while? I think that's going to be the latter, I think. I mean, I don't think we like need Spider-Man. an origin story for every character. Like, yeah. maybe tell, tell it with a few flashbacks throughout the movie, but... You know, it, it really would open the door for them to cast a lot of different people if we pick up with these characters when they're already like late thirties or early forties, maybe. I mean, look what they did with Blade. Mahershala Ali is not a young man. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And that's coming I, out I in the next season. couple of years. Yeah, yeah. So I, I could see them being trapped somewhere all this time, and that's why we haven't seen them. <laughs> They've been trapped for since the beginning of the MCU. That'd be funny. <laughs> They'll figure something but, out. Um, what I'm curious about is, are they going to maintain the multiverse going forward, or is there going to come a point where we end up with one universal timeline again? Because if they keep the multiverse going forward, and they cross over with different universes once in a while, it gives them the ability to cast different actors as some of yeah. these recognizable roles. So we could get Captain America as played by the guy who almost played him, John Krasinski. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh my wow. god. Yeah. Um, yeah, he like auditioned and screenshot for the role and just lost to Evans. But we almost had Jim from The Office as Cap. <laughs> that would have been weird. Um, yeah, I'm curious because I I think this could lead to the next big crossover. Like I think this could be like the next Thanos level event. Definitely. Yeah. Well, they're, they're clearly trying to position either him or whatever he's capable of doing as being 
more of a threat than even Thanos because he was able to create or at least inhabit some space where the Infinity Stones are completely useless. So that right there kind of tells you, like, all the things that Thanos thought were the most powerful things in the universe are just trinkets to this guy. There's also multiple of them, too. Right. Yeah. Which we never got, we, they never went back to that, like, did Loki steal one of those Infinity Stones? That they, they never touched on that, so I don't mm. even know if that's supposed to be a plot point moving forward. Probably not. I feel like if he was, I, I feel like they wouldn't wait until season two to say, hey, I've had a time stone in my pocket for the last however fucking long it is, or ten episodes. I mean, maybe. It's always possible knowing Marvel, but like, I don't, I don't think they will, but we'll see. I thought overall they, they capped it off on a good note. It was a satisfying episode. It left me looking forward to season two whenever that's going to be. Uh, but in the meantime, we got What If coming up next month, which, like you said, Chris, I'm really looking forward to as well, and I think with all the uh, people that got attached to the project, it looks fucking awesome but uh this has been loki it's been great breaking the show down with you guys tom it's been awesome having you on to discuss the show as well you are on the twitter machine as you said at tom clark pods uh, you do a lot of great stuff tom uh plug that stuff one more time before we ride off in the sunset here uh sure uh, tom clark's main event is the pro wrestling podcast it airs uh Live most of the time on every Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Wrestling Rumors and also on Tom Carr's main event on Facebook page. Uh, Tom Carr's 6M podcast, which uh, Phil and Chris have both uh, co-hosted. It's uh, movies, music, Marvel, magazines, miniseries, and more. It's sort of an umbrella pod. It's a catch-all for everything except pro wrestling, and then we also cover pro wrestling on that as well. <laughs> and Graham, uh, the, invi- the invitation is still open to you, my friend, to come on the 6M. Uh, we'd love to have you on. Hey, Tom, let me know whenever you want my on, my man. Let me know whenever you want me on, my man, and I'll be sure to uh, make whatever episode it is. I'm absolutely cool. open to it. I think it'd be awesome. But, uh, yeah, no, this has been great, Tom. Thanks for coming on to our show. This has been a lot of fun having you on. Chris, Phil, this has been great, too. Chris, you're on the Twitter machine at Phil. Or, no, Phil's on the Twitter machine at Phil D, uh, DL616. I'm mixing up my fucking variants here. Chris, you're on the Twitter machine at BR underscore doctor. Uh, Chris, <laughs> Phil, <laughs> Tom, this has been awesome, guys. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Thanks. Yep.